Welcome to this video. D is Asian and D is its descendant, so D and D are not African. But it is Y-DNA E that dominates Africa, that includes all recognized modern humans of Africa, and especially on the locations where out of Africa is supposed to have left Africa. So on the male side no argument that comes close to this paradigm is available. The only standing argument for out of Africa is mtDNAL that is supposed to be the ancestor mtDNA of all modern humans and of course also is supposed to be African. The challenge here is that mtDNA is not human, not stable and mtDNAL is not first presented by an African female individual, but was carried by a Neanderthal female long before. Further Sub-Saharan Africa is not supposed to have known the Neanderthal. So mtDNAL most probably is not African. What is left and in fact more convincing than Y-DNA and mtDNA is the African haplotype. Here again the near basal types that are around the time of the Neanderthal are clearly American, so again not African. When African haplotypes start to appear much later they do not spread out of Africa or at least not at all like the Amerindian types did long before. Resuming this is no argument at all fronts and the fundamentals point to Amerindians and consequently YHPQ. Consensus out of Africa focuses and depends a lot on the Beringia standstill that releases the first Amerindians only around 12,600 years ago. This Beringia standstill is quite paradigmatic, but we will not discuss this now. At some point certain ancient Northeast Asians that lived roughly 25,000 years ago were proposed to be the ancestors for the people that are supposed to enter the Beringia standstill thousands of years before the supposed release of Amerindians around 12,600 years ago. It was genetically and scientifically proven that these ancient Northeast Asians that lived roughly 25,000 years ago were in fact Amerindian that had left the Americas. One of the arguments for this that is easy to understand is that the root of these certain ancient Northeast Asians that lived roughly 25,000 years ago lies in the Americas and are Native Americans or Amerindians. Another way to formulate this could be that these ancient Northeast Asians presented mutations that happened on top of Amerindian DNA or an Amerindian ancestor. This does not fit, because a group that was newly created and released 12,600 years ago cannot have lived or died 25,000 years ago and certainly not on the wrong side of Beringia or rather deep in Eurasia. Further no other group, not even extinct then these ancient Northeast Asians that lived roughly 25,000 years ago, can be proposed as the ancestor of the Amerindians. In other words, ancestors of Amerindian do not and did not exist. This is only possible if the Amerindians themselves are their ancestors and consequently of all humans and this includes all modern humans. This of course confirms the Austronesian expansion, or at least argues in favor of all expansions that depart from the Americas and go in the direction of the rest of the world including Africa. No other expansions other than the Austronesian expansion are clearly proposed and evidenced in literature, at least not as the ancestors of all modern humans. So why no possible ancestor for the Amerindians or the Beringia standstill can be found? What is different about the Amerindians? In fact not that much except that they are the ancestors of all others or do not present the hybridization or mutations that all other humans present. So resuming the human marker and even the non-human markers that dominate Africa are not African and the Amerindians are their own ancestors and that of all humans. Consequently any expansion 50 to 70 Kia or any other period was an out of America expansion or a kind of Austronesian expansion. Since this expansion crosses the Pacific Ocean obviously advanced navigation was in play at the latest 50 to 70 Kia. Considering the characteristics of this expansion it cannot have been advanced navigation of a small number of boats but rather of fleets of boats with considerable capacity and speed. Most probably the commanders etc. and boats traveled down and up the currents. To travel back to the Americas from the West involves what is called the Roaring Forties and the Furious Fifties and demands even more advanced navigation. Even while these were fast routes to return to the Americas from the West, 
they were exceptional and short-lived because of considerable risks and losses. This illustrates well how advanced navigators the Amerindians really were. There is plenty of additional evidence for all of this, but it is not recognized. Thank you for watching. Bye.